Society is a dangerous norm, and I don't want to be normal. When I was younger, many times people would say to me, why do you want to be so different? I would say to them, as I'm saying to you now, I don't want to be. I just am. I don't want to be like you. I don't want you to be like me. I don't want to be like you. Why? Because it's too good being myself. Hallelujah. 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 Now I want you to turn with me to the manufacturer's guide, the manufacturer's manual. And I want you to read a section with me in the manual that talks about you. It's found in Psalm, subsection 139, article 14. Now, for those of you that are religious, that's Psalm 139, 14. And in the manual, it talks about the product. Here's what the manufacturer says about the product. Now remember, only the manufacturer knows the truth, knows the truth about the product. Are you ready? All right, let's look at Psalm 139.13. For you created my innermost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Are we okay? Do you understand this technical jargon? I have to talk like this because some of you are so spiritual. That's why you're driving at 50 miles per hour. Listen, please. Here you are working at a shoe store and excited about being the supervisor. But the manufacturer is depressed about it because you're supposed to own the store. We get excited about what he's disappointed about. Verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of your hands, and my soul knows this well. Brother, I don't know about you. Sister, I don't know about you, but this gets me stirred up. He says, I praise you. He's talking to the manufacturer. He says, and thank you, manufacturer. Thank you, factor, that made me. Why? Because I am fearfully made. Write that word down, fearfully, please. Now, check how it's spelled. Be careful. It doesn't say fearfully. It says fearfully. It says, when he made me, he made me fearfully. The Hebrew word here is an awesome word. It means when he put me together, when he was manufacturing me, I just imagine he was full of fear. What? You say, why? It's the kind of fear that an artist has. He was like an artist putting something together. I'm an artist, a songwriter, a producer, and when I'm creating, there's a certain time that you have this fear that comes over you, see? You just want it to be right. You just don't want to make a mistake. You are afraid of making a mistake, see? God did not want to make a mistake. I just imagine now because God is a real perfectionist. Now that makes me shout. Hallelujah. That's why David said, I praise you. Why? Because when you put me together, it is exactly what you wanted. My nose is perfect. Why? Because my nose was necessary for my purpose. My cheekbones are exactly what I needed to be 
what I was born to be. When you wired me and fixed my hair the way it is, it is related to what I was born to do. You didn't make a mistake, in other words. That's why you should stop hating your face, because he took a lot of time to put that together for you. So especially women, stop looking in Vogue magazine for your face. Hello, somebody. Stop trying to become like GQ, men. You are no gentleman quarterly. You are a gentleman all the time. He was so careful that he wanted you to be not only exactly as he wanted, but he wanted you to look the way you look. That's why in Isaiah it says, How can the pot say to the potter, How and why did you make me like this? And he said, Don't you dare ask the manufacturer why he made you like this because he has some stuff that you don't know about that required what you got. Your height is perfect. So don't let them tell you you're too tall. Don't trip on your height. Why? Because it's connected to your purpose. Come on now. When he wanted to design you, I like this. It says he created you in the innermost being and he put you together in your mother's womb. That means when he wanted you, he was even careful about which womb you were to be in. Do you understand what we're saying here? Do you understand what we're saying? If you're black, he wanted you black. If you are white, he wanted you white. If you are yellow, he wanted you yellow. If you ain't sure what you are, that's exactly what he wants. Whenever God wants a combination, he combines them. Hey now, tell your neighbor I'm perfect to do what I was born to do and mind your own business. Clap your hands if you understand what God is doing in this place of fellowship today. He knitted me together in my mother's womb and I am fearfully put together. The manufacturer says, you are wonderfully made. Write that down, that word wonderful, if you will. Listen, I want to show you just how much we don't understand the word sometimes. The word wonder or wonderful is actually two words put together, a grammatical construction because the Hebrew word was so complicated, they had to use two English words to create the word. I am wonderful means that when he put me together, when he designed me, when he fearfully finished me, putting together all the little details, the Bible says when he finished I was full of wonder. That means when I walk in your presence, it makes you wonder. Wow, listen to that. Tell your neighbor, I am wonderful. Tell your neighbor, I know you're wondering about me. Clap your hands if you know what I'm talking about. I'm supposed to be a nation. If somebody don't like you here, tell them this is a wonder here. It's not the fact that you don't like it. you just wondering about it. And yet you continue wondering about sometimes the wrong things. You're wondering about me. I'm full of wonder. You can't figure me out why I am full of wonder. You don't know what I am going to do next. I don't know what I am going to do next, but the Holy Spirit does. And you must stay focused on his leading. Otherwise, it's not with the full blessing. I want the full blessing, see? I am full of wonder. When you think I've 
failed, tomorrow I am full of success. I make you wonder when you thought I'd quit, I start again. It makes you wonder about me. I am wonderfully made, wonderfully made. Listen, let me tell you something. Please, there are people that believe they have got to be like somebody, to be somebody. Why would you want to be like somebody when you are an original? It's boring being like other people. It's boring dressing like other people. You are an original. Please hear that. That's why when you go to the store to buy clothes, you notice that the cheap ones are all the same. You know what I mean. All those dress tailors are are the same, and their dresses are the same. They're cheap. Let me say it one more time so you don't miss it. When you find ten dresses all the same, they're cheap dresses. But when you go to lords and tailors, and you see that dress in the window, and it says $5,000, they're there's a reason why it's 5K, cause when you wear that, ain't nobody else got that one on. So listen, the next time that somebody tells you that they don't like your attire or your outfit or your dress or, or your suit, just tell them I did not buy it for you in the first place, okay? It's amazing when women go shopping and men do it too. People that shop, listen, you can always tell if they have low esteem by the way they buy and wear their clothes. So the people I'm talking about, if they see the something they like and if they really like it, they will buy it. Simple as that. You like that? I like that. Yo, so you come out and you say to your friends, what do you think? Why are you asking them? And then your friend says, I don't like it. And you say, well, neither do I. And then you take it off and put it back. Tell your neighbor, be yourself so you can see yourself. Wonderfully made. And the next word just makes me want to dance. It says the word marvelous. Marvelous are the works of your hand. Let that word marvelous sink in for a minute. Write it down, if you will. Marvelous. M-A-R-V-E-L-O-U-S. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please write it down. It's from the word marvel. See, listen. What God has produced supposed to make people marvel. I was in the airport either in Los Angeles or Atlanta. I don't really remember which port, but I saw these young men walking and they were coming in the airport and they all looked alike. It was crazy. They all had the same haircut. They all had the same baggy pants and they all walked like this here. I thought they were in a band. It was so today though. I thought and think to myself, why would people want to get lost in other people? You're too important to be covered up by somebody else's personality. Some of you parents have got to stop comparing your children too. Why don't you be like John? Shut up. He's different from John. Marvelous, the works of your hands. And he says, my soul knows this. One of the most powerful things in this verse is the last part of it. My soul knows this. You don't need a magazine to tell you you're marvelous. You don't need any psychologist or psychiatrist to tell you you're wonderful. My soul knows this. I don't need any somebody to tell me that I look good. My soul knows I'm good. I don't need anyone to confirm 
or affirm or reaffirm who I am. I know that I am marvelous. My soul knows I'm good. You see, when you don't know this thing for yourself, then you'll go to other people for affirmation. And believe me, you go to other people to find out who you are. One thing is for sure. They'll never make you more than they are. That's why you have got to discover for yourself your own treasure. Now, this next verse is really difficult to comprehend, so we're going to move slowly through it because the next two verses talks about something that is so heavy that it would honestly take about two or three weeks for me to teach it, but that might be because I'm slow. But let me just mention a couple of thoughts first. When I was woven together in my mother's womb, the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. God said when the sperm and the egg collided and germination took place, my eyes were on that, and my eyes never left it. That means there's one thing God is always watching, and that's a pregnant woman. So when you go to get your private abortion, all of heaven is front row watching. God is there personally observing the awesome potential that you are meddling with. You don't know who you are carrying. That's why you shouldn't touch that child. Suppose Mary had had an abortion. I am so glad that Moses' mother saved his little body. Because in that basket was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In that basket was the Ten Commandments. See, you don't know who you're carrying. The son that seems to be so wayward right now, and that daughter that seems to be so against society and academic harmony right now, the one that seems so rebellious, don't you dump that daughter. Don't you dump that son. Now, who would imagine that a serial killer, a man that has killed so many people that we even lost count, that in that serial killer was 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Titus, and Timothy, and Philemon. Three quarters of the New Testament was in a serial killer. You just never know. You just never know whom you are carrying. And I say to every doctor who is watching, listening, or reading this program, the only reason you are able to be a doctor and help and heal people is because your mama didn't abort you. Verse 16, your eyes saw my unformed body. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, all the days of my life were already ordained for me and were written in your book before any one of them began. Listen. Not only did he form me in my mother's womb, but it also says all of my days of all of my life, they were already ordained for me, finished and programmed and were written in his book before any one of those days ever began. In other words, before I was born, there was a book on my life that was finished. You are not a mistake, my brother. 
You are not a mistake, my sister. You are a bestseller waiting to be written. All of the days were already recorded in your book, and they were there recorded before I was released from my mother's womb. They were there before you were released from your mother's womb. Do you hear that? That means God has a book on your life, and God never writes anything less than a bestseller. God has never produced a failure yet, even though people fail. That also means in the next verse that in that book that God has written tells you everything thing you are supposed to do and be. And the next verse says, and the thoughts you have of me, oh Lord, you are so awesome, that if I were to try and comprehend them, it would be as awesome as to attempt to count the sand on the seashore. I pray you get this. It's strange. And the thoughts you have of me. If I were to try and comprehend them, it would be as awesome as to attempt to count the sand on the seashore. It says the book of my life has some thoughts in it that you have about me and the thoughts are so awesome that if I attempt, just attempt to understand them, it would be as awesome as trying to count the sand on the seashore. In other words, the stuff God has written on you will blow people's minds. The stuff you are supposed to do on this planet before you die is so amazing that if God told you what it was, listen, it is so incredible, you tell God he, he, he was lying. The problem is you have been traveling at 60 miles per hour and God is trying to get you up to 160 and you are busy telling God this can't go 160 and that's the problem. You know why you don't go over 60? I'm going to tell you why you don't go over 60. Because there's some laws being created by man. And those laws say you can't travel beyond the speed limit. The last time I spoke to the manufacturer, I asked him, what are my possibilities? How fast can I really go? Do you know what he said to me? He said, all things are possible. If you believe. <laughs> We're going to stop this. For right now. The next chapter. Is coming. Soon. Lord thank you for your word. Dad thank you for your word today. Thank you that it just. Through the airwaves. Just went out and just blessed people. One by one. Thank you in the name of Yahushua, I pray. You be blessed now, you hear? <laughs>